the opening of that building. I don't know whether you noticed. In 1933, by Hubert Cargon, a member of the same family, who was the Liberal Member of Parliament in those days for this part of London. And so Cargon uh, is a good Liberal pedigree, just as <laughs> Frederick Mortessa II is a great Ugandan pedigree. And it was therefore wonderful that when uh, there had to be the second uh, flight from Uganda after the second coup, not long after he first took office of, as president, he was able to come here and his friend Richard, uh, who was a wonderful, wonderful uh, citizen and benefactor and uh, imaginative creator of uh, social and other services, was able to look after him and accommodate him. They'd been military friends, as you know, and he welcomed him here. And it was therefore not surprising that at the end of that exercise, um, Richard Cargon said, I have a place where you can stay and where you can live. And, and he offered the flat we've just seen. And I enjoyed very much, like others, actually going into the flat uh, in 28 Orchard House. And I hope that, will, that flat too will be especially remembered. The, the, the young men who are currently the tenants there uh, are very supportive of possibly making that remembered and if we can contact the owner who I think we can through them uh, possibly she will be able to make sure the flat too is recognized mm -hmm. those places are really important in history mm -hmm. really important in history uh, this may sound slightly uh, arrogant but I don't mean it that way probably the most moving moment of my life in terms of feeling close to history was when I uh, went in um, about 10 years ago to South Africa, not for the first time, um, and I was uh, accommodated in the state house of the governor of um, Cape Province, the first minister of Cape Province, and she lives in a wonderful house at the bottom um, of the mountain looking over Cape Town. Mm. And I was taken to my room and I was uh, um, asked if I would be happy to stay in what was on the door, it said Mandiba room. Um, and I asked whether that was just in honor to Mandela, but, uh, or was there more? <coughs> and she told me it was the room in which Mandela stayed and slept in the days before he became the first democratically elected president of South Africa. Mm -hmm. And to have stayed in that room was, I was tearful, I was in tears. I was sitting at the desk where he sat, I was at the place where he, he put together his first cabinet. Uh, and I think we need to open up the places of history mm -hmm. so that other people can appreciate uh, how important they are. And there is no doubt <coughs> that uh, the record of uh, King Frederick Mutesa, I know that in uh, Uganda he's not known as King Frederick, but he became known familiarly familiar <coughs> as King Frederick here, uh, would be of continuing uh, historical interest, not just to people with Ugandan roots and Ugandan roots, coming to the UK, but with many other people who understand and appreciate the battle for liberty, the battle for independence, the battle for integrity, uh, the importance of leadership. Third thing just to say is that uh, Richard Cargon would simplify somebody who, who worked terribly hard to create wonderful social networks of organisations. Two of the most famous charities in Britain are called the Cargon Society and the Abbeyfield Society. Uh, dealing with uh, different forms of people in need created by him. Um, uh, your organisation is, uh, is based on heritage, uh, but it's also about mutual support and love and care and concern for the Ugandan community, the Ugandan community in the UK, of which there are considerable numbers, not just here in London. Um, and there will be people going to, to and fro from uh, Uganda to the UK, always. Our, our links are so strong historically that that will continue. And so what I hope today does is bring together the community 
of those of you who are of Ugandan heritage and uh, confirm that you are really valued and appreciated here in the UK. But I hope also it educates the youngsters of today and tomorrow that we are interdependent that we are interdependent not just with those places of which we were the colonial power, but places that are with us in the Commonwealth, and where if there is oppression or a lack of democracy in one place, uh, then there is a duty on the rest of us to be mutually supportive, uh, to make sure there is asylum, to make sure there is refuge, to make sure there is support. And we live in very polarized political days. I'm not going to make an overtly political statement. But in polarized political days, there is a danger that there is a naive and dangerous misunderstanding of what it is meant to be a refugee or a seeker for asylum. Uh, there is a dangerous 